Well, it's an attempt to vlog once again. Uh, so this is the Big Bang Theory. All uh, BTS vlogs behind the scenes. You're seeing behind the scenes of uh, real life nerd. Along the lines of uh, Sheldon and Cooper of Big Bang Theory. Uh, this is the it, it's become the easiest way to sort of explain everything that that I do, and uh, you will find uh, that. The format has changed. I'm going to be backfilling a lot of this stuff. There's a lot of backfilling that needs to be done. Uh, because I've made several attempts to vlog. But every time I've got through even a few of the vlogs, uh, a couple of months of the vlog, six months sometimes, uh, something would happen and the vlog would stop. Part of the problem uh, these last three years was uh, I was the cataracts were developing in my eyes. And every I'd stop every so often because the eyesight was dibbing uh, was uh, uh, was degrading sufficiently. I'm gonna think of the thoughts here, think of the words, and bring the thoughts out clearly. So it was a degrading eyesight. The eyesight was getting worse and worse. And these were the periods where, I, when I would stop, I would stop during these periods of uh, increased uh, blindness because, uh, as of uh, uh, we got to the October front time frame of uh, 2018. Uh, well, actually, before then, it was actually in uh, April, and May of 2000. Of 2018, uh, I had become legally blind. I couldn't see properly. I mean, so badly that I mean, I could arrange things so I can I could feel my way around. I could sort of see shapes, and you know, it, it just it wasn't a good situation. So even though I had tried vlogging last in, in, in much of 2018, because we're coming on the close of 2018, uh, not much actually got done, and, and uh, it kind of fell off the uh, wagon again. Well, if I have this, bring it back again this year. Let's try it this year. Uh, I've got some new options, some new editing things. I've and I've still got new eyes. Uh, I got, yeah, I got uh, new lens put, new lenses put in. Uh, the cataract were taken out. There was a successful surgery. Uh, I am just two weeks out of uh, the post-operative phase. Uh, no more medication. Everything. The final checkup went through, and everything was good. I'm almost back to 2020. Uh, I'm just a line below, uh, a line above 2020. 2020 is the is the is the bottom line of if you see the chart there of all the numbers that you have, or letter numbers and letters you have to read. Uh, the bottom the bottom line of the eye chart is 2020, and I'm the next line up. So not bad. I do have to go back in for some uh, what we'll call touch up later sur surgery. This would be the eye, uh, LASIK eye surgery to touch up and correct some of the uh, 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 issues uh, that prevented me from getting down to 30, 30, uh, 2020. So uh, I'll do that in February, but looks like we're back on schedule again for vlogging and I decide, well, up in this point in time now, it took me a while to get everything organized. And so now I'm in this point here is to just sit down and vlog. And it's December 25th uh, today. It's around 3 o'clock in the morning. Let's check. Yeah, it's about 3.10. You can see in the clock back there if you can see it uh, on the screen. It's about 3.10. It's uh, Tuesday, December 25th. And the title is going to be Vlogmas because uh, there are two Christmases. There's two Christmases. The one we have today 
is the new Christmas. It uh, began this celebrating this Christmas on the twenty fifth. Uh, began in uh, around fifteen hundred under Pope Gregory, who decided that they want to change the calendar. They had a number of reasons for why they wanted to change their, their the calendar, and many people said, "Well, the, and this is where the argument is today. Is it, it has been the, been thus historically as well that oh, this calendar is more accurate." Well, if you're an astronomer and knew where the calendars came from, uh, had an understanding of the sort of the physics behind it, uh, you would go, uh, "Not really." Because uh, they used about maybe 50 years worth of data. Uh, the rest of it's based on equations. They used a solar model, model rather than an astronomical model. Uh, to give you an understanding of how accurate the, what they called the old calendar was, it was really, uh, it was called the Julian calendar, but it was essentially the Egyptian uh, astronomical calendar. And these calendars were so accurate because they weren't actually used simply to chart time. Uh, they were indicators of position. They were maps. If you were traveling at that point in time and your map was not accurate, you'd get lost. You'd go, whoa, well, where am I? And this is this is what you see in a book enough for Christmas. You know, the wise men were following, uh, the magi were following a star. Whoa, why were they following a star? Because they were astronomers. They had an innate sense of astronomy. They knew, they to tell where they were by looking at the stars. And of course, the way they charted everything, they charted everything in the heavens according to the stars. So you would know when the moon is in what particular phase, by what house it's in, right? The, how, how the moon is in the house of Jupiter, or you have the, the, it be in, in, the, in, in the Trap of Cancer. Or, or, or the, in other words, take the zodiac. Place your, your objects, like the moon, the sun, and the planets, within these houses. And you now have a celestial reference to where these things are, like the, the, the moon, the, uh, the, 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 the sun, and the planets, which were all, in terms of their frequency, moved faster than the stars. And the stars seemed to be immobile. They didn't seem to move at all. Uh, so, so, well, okay, that's your background. That's your reference. That's your. The stars became the reference grid. And then everything else was done in relationship to the stars. And when they go back and they look, take a look at how the, 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 the pyramids of, uh, of Egypt are arranged, look at, at uh, Angkor Wat, or any of these ancient sites, they were all built with astronomy, including the Mayans. Their calendar, their knowledge of, of astronomy was spectacular because... Even though the Mayan civilization is gone, their calendar still remained accurate. Why? Because it was based on the, on stellar motion. And I think as you go back to the Egyptian calendars and you go back to so well, where where how old is the earliest papyrus read referencing the construct of the uh, of of the pyramids? Because they were using astronomical references in there. They were using astronomical coordinates. That's where that was their measuring stick. That's how they knew to build. That's how they could build things that were large. And it was three thousand BC. So from three thousand BC, if you understand the history of Egypt, as they went into different empires and conquered different areas, they picked up their astronomical cars. Then they had the port of Alexandria. The port of Alexandria at that time, uh, it is that was the Haiti. It was the central point, and people were coming into Egypt to get whatever they want. But it was a massive empire. And as they would come in, there was a law there that required them to leave their, their shipping logs. And this included their astronomical charts. So they could see, okay, this, this ship was here at this particular point in time, according to the, according to the, to the stars. Even GPS today, to sort of go off a little bit, even GPS is based on the old sextant uh, uh, astronomical alignments. It is still fundamentally old. That's how it does its calculation. This is why GPS needs to be a satellite and not simply a high-flying uh, drone. Because it needs these celestial references. It needs to be in this sort of fixed reference frame. If it's not there, then you don't have the proper references. 
And so the thing is, the, the Egyptian calendar was very accurate. It's accurate as the Mayan. If you go study the Mayan calendar, see how accurate the Mayan calendar look at the whole issue of the uh, 2012 doomsday thing. Go look into what people are talking about about that. You don't have to believe everything, but just sort of say, go in and take a look at it and see, you know. And the thing is, you have to use multiple references. One reference isn't going to give you everything. Uh, the nature of research is, is the, give me proof. Where is your particular proof? Well, my proof is over, uh, let's say, 30 different resources, 30 different sources, and if you don't want, if you want to spend the next uh, uh, month or year doing the research work for here, here's how you do this. Well, oh no, I wanted one time something now within five minutes. Well, you want me to t to bring the still, uh, well, because I've been doing this now for 30 years. You want me to distill 30 years, or let's say the project itself, the uh, project itself is like, like 5, 10 years. You want me to distill 5, 10 years of research experience into 5 minutes? It's not possible. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's not, it's, it's just literally not possible to do that. And so what happens is that there's a discrepancy between the two calendars. The old calendar is a astronomical calendar along the lines of the Mayan calendar or what was used at Anchor or what. That's what it was. And it's accurate to the point because you could go back with, with the computers today. Uh, it can use something called the Julian date which is based on the Julian calendar. And you can calculate where things were. You could calculate the, the called the procession of the stars. So you know where they were way back, let's say back when they were building Anchor Wild or whatever. And what happens is as you do that and you plot your, you, 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 your, your, your sort of your digital planetarium, you can go back and see what the stars were like uh, way back when where they were building Anchor Wild. What do you find? Well, you find that, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, that Anchor Wild plots exactly to, to, to the date of Anchor Wild. They say that Anchor Wild was created. Go back to that date and say, well... Here it is. Here, here's the. Here, it was based on the star uh, on, on the constellation Orion. Same thing with the Egyptian uh, pyramids. It was based on the constellation Orion, and you can compare the two. You can see that these two, the the, the Egyptian pyramids and Angkor Wat, in terms of their uh, astronomical alignment with 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 Orion, were did bang on. And ironically enough, same thing with the uh, the the um, the Mayan and, and the Incan pyramids. They were also dead bang on. According to astronomical alignment, so this is this is sufficient. Listen, not proof, but evident that this calendar was extremely accurate. I said, well, why isn't the uh, you know the Gregorian calendar act this accurate? Why is, do you have this discrepancy? It's because this, the Gregorian calendar was not an astronomical, astronomical calendar; it was specifically a solar calendar. It only considered the position of the, of, of the sun. It ignored the position. Of the stars. In other words, the Julian calendar gave you the position of the sun, but in reference to where it was with the background zodiac. Same thing with a lunar calendar. You have the Jews and the Muslims have a lunar calendar, but it's not simply a lunar calendar. It's in same thing. The same with the, with the Chinese. If you notice, look at the Chinese uh, uh, calendar. Very complex, very detailed. Why? Because it considers the moon in reference to what the background zodiac is. In other words, back where the stars are. It is not simply a lunar calendar, but it's in, uh, the lunar calendar with the reference to the stars, in reference to the stars. So its frame of reference always is within that stellar background. It is only when you get to the, to the Gregorian calendar, this is the new calendar, around 1500 AD, that the Pope's astronomers just simply wiped that off and just simply went, went with, the, uh, with a simple uh, 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 solar calculation. And the discrepancy is, is that but they simply just took the dates of December twenty fifth on the Julian calendar, which is astronomical, and transposed it to December twenty fifth on the uh, Gregorian calendar, the new calendar. Well, you can't do that because those two dates aren't the same thing. So this is why you have the discrepancy. You have the we call it the Western Christmas for the Western Christians. Being December twenty fifth of the current calendar, which is Gregorian, and we have the Eastern Christmas, which is denoted by the Ukrainian Christmas, as being January seventh. And the thing is, why is that the same difference? Because December twenty fifth 
um, the astronomical calendar is falls now falls on January seventh of the new of the of the new calendar or the solar calendar. There is a, there is a discrepancy in dates. So those of you who say, well, maybe Saturnalia, this is what we're you know, it's really a pagan festival. Oh, yes and no, because the Catholics weren't really Christians. The people who were running the Catholic Church, the people themselves within the Catholic Church were Christian, but the leaders, the papacy, was not weren't Christian. They were pagans. And they turned Christianity into a sort of a Christian form of paganism. This is why you see the statues. The statues were the indication, or are the indication, that this church is not properly Christian. It's not the way it was before. That this is a pagan Christian church. And so they're close to Saturnalia, but the original Christmas wasn't. So that's the thing. You have two Christmases. You have December 25th, which was the new one, according to Pope Gregory. And then you have the second one, uh, January 7th, uh, recognized by these. And ironically enough, who did not follow the Gregorian calendar? England and the United States. You have a lot of history, current history, and we'll get into that later on in other uh, episodes. Uh, of the of exactly where we are in terms of how history fits in with current day politics, and there is a a, a, a sufficient amount of of interesting notes that will take you from today's current events back to you know, well, why is Russia our enemy? Well, because the people who are opposing Russia in the United States are fundamentally Germans. They're Fundamentally, they're the ones who formed the Catholic Church. And this whole concept of Europe has been going on since the time of the Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman, and, nor, and it was an empire. It was simply a collection of Germanic tribes that, 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 these, that these Germans sort of attacked everyone around them and brought them into so got a loose congregation called Europe. This is the formation of Europe, but basically the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church. Before then, there wasn't a Europe. And the thing is, who was left out of this? And all you have to do is go back into history and take a look at the uh, the Battle of Normandy in England, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Norman invasion, and understand that not only did you have the Germans attacking east, n northeast to uh, Russia through the Ukraine, but you had them attacking in England as well. And so who, who, who England in... And ironically, Russia didn't go with the Gregorian calendar. They stayed with the uh, uh, with the, the new calendar almost up into the late 1800s. So, uh, the dynamics of today's geopolitics has its roots at seeds way back uh, about about 1000 AD when the, when the uh, uh, when the uh, Europe emerged, and the the entanglements are still with us today. So anyways, uh, I think I'm going to leave that here. Uh, yeah, we've gone about 15 minutes. I'm going to leave this, uh, our, our vlogs a little shorter than it was. 15 minutes is good enough. Yeah, we're about uh, 17 minutes in. So uh, that's, about the, uh, that's about the length of a sitcom. So I'll leave it here for that. And uh, to, I wish you all a Merry Christmas for those who are celebrating uh, Christmas. For the Greeks and the Eastern Christians, uh, it's St. Spirit on this. So I'll uh, let the air welcome in uh, say... Uh, Kiara to anyone named uh, Spiridono, uh, Spiridon, uh, hail or congratulations or however you want to do it, and Juanita uh, Pala. And that's another form of congratulation, but it means uh, many years. So uh, that's the end of our first. Oh, the Bluetooth sometimes asks really off, off really off, so we're adding a second segment in here because uh, the Bluetooth cut everything off too quickly. I was in mid. <laughs> I should remember to do this and go back into the same position it ends where it ends at, and that way you have a better uh, cut between the two segments. Uh, anyways, we were saying goodbye anyways, so <laughs> it's going to remain a short. I will hopefully see you tomorrow. I'm going to make an attempt to vlog every day. Uh, I don't necessarily know how things are going to go, but we'll go from there. Uh, the news is coming back, and you're going to see this on. Uh, in addition to the main channel, Cyborg Alpha TV. 
You're going to see it on Cyborg, Cyborg Alpha TV Network because we, I am, am working on growing the entire network. So uh, look forward to that. And we'll be a, a day or two off sometimes. In other words, if I can't get a vlog up, that means that there was something ha happened during the day and I wasn't able to get the filming and editing done for the vlog. So uh, that's the way I'm going to leave it. I said 17 minutes is sufficient. That's about the length of a, of, of a uh, I think probably has to do with something with my hand. I have abnormal uh, 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 electrical fields in my hand. Uh, and these electrical fields interfere with Bluetooth. They interfere with my phone in terms of the gaming. So you will be seeing gaming coming up. Actually, you'll be seeing gaming sometime probably uh, 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 a little bit after this vlog goes up. You'll probably be seeing a gaming vlog go up. Uh, but it's going to be on a different channel. It'll be on Kawhi Tea House TV. But everything is going to be there at uh, uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network. So that's where you find everything all in one place. You don't have to go over to particular channels to find different things. There are going to be different things on different channels in terms of specifics. If you want to go take a look at this and that, there are going to be specific things. So because each one is around on a, on a very specific topic or a specific area, and uh, I'm not going to sh shove everything together at one point in terms of all the material. So the shows will be in one place on the Cyborg Alpha TV Network, and then the actual content will be split up according to the different channels depending on what the genre is, what what, what the topic is, and so on and so forth. Anyways, I will see you tomorrow uh, for the next episode of Big Bang Theory RL. See you then. Democratic Earth. Earth.